What's going on YouTube? Thanks for tuning into the channel. Your boy Devin Coates. Day 44, 48 days, the 48 laws. Link in the description below where you can pick up your copy. Um, let me jump right in. Law 44, disarm and infuriate with the disarm and infuriate with the mirror effect judgment the mirror reflects reality but it is also the perfect tool for deception when you mirror your enemies doing exactly as they do they cannot figure out your strategy the mirror effect mocks and humili humiliates them uh, making them overreact by holding up a mirror to their psyche uh, you seduce them with the illusion that you share their values by holding up a mirror to their actions you teach them a lesson if you can resist the power of the mirror effect so this chapter is extremely long so it's gonna be once again one of those ones that are pretty hard to go through all the stories so from kind of having a little bit of experience on the past ones I think this is what I'm gonna do um, first uh, let me just kind of there's four different major effects so the first thing is like a basic typology of what the mirror effect is and you know seeing yourself it's like it was a big change but uh, the neutralizing effect so um, basically that's when you kind of do a reflection of somebody else and you're mirroring their moves and they really can't tell what you're doing also you can do it in the other way which is the shadow and you basically follow their moves almost kind of spying on them and then you get a very good glimpse into who they are and the person that kind of exemplified this was Fouché so Napoleon we've kind of told this story a bunch of times uh, basically when he gets sent off to that island and then he comes back to um, France he France is completely different and the only person he can count on it really is Fouché and Fouché it was his um, a minister of the minister of police and basically uh, Fouché the thing he never really liked about him or he liked in the beginning he didn't like at the end was that he could never put his finger on him he never really disagreed with anybody if he said something he kind of just was like oh yeah 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 and then he would just kind of say what you needed to hear and then he would just leave and that was his ability if you remember from the other stories for him to during a very tumultuous time in france switch from all these different sides so napoleon could never really get a pulse on him or a feel for what he was doing because he was always mirroring napoleon's sentiments then he gets advice uh he gets information that uh fouché is actually betraying him and meeting with uh somebody from austria and um I don't know what the name was, but it's some guy from Austria. So he's like, I know I can't really com His name is Metternich, Metternich or Metternich um, from Austria. So he's like, I can't confront him because he's too slippery. There's no way I'll be able to confront him without hard proof. So let me send my spies to find out. His spies, like, uh, they find the guy that was supposed to drop a message and they're like basically torturing the guy. And he's like, yeah, I was supposed to give this letter to Fouché. And it's in secret ink and need to use some kind of powders to um, read the thing and read read the letter and they're going to set up a secret meeting. So he's like, all right, why don't I send a spy to meet on a secret meeting and then when we catch him, he's going to be hanged. And uh, basically when the meeting comes, nobody's there and nothing happens. Nobody goes to the meeting. So he's kind of pissed. He's like, what the fuck? And then the next day, Fouché comes over to... Um, Napoleon goes, oh man, I really forgot, like, I'm supposed to be getting this letter from Metternich from Austria, and um, I'm supposed to be getting this letter from Metternich from Austria, and uh, he never gave me the special powder to uh, read the stuff, so I'm kind of confused. Uh, I mean, so I couldn't really do anything with it, but I completely forgot to tell you. And one part that I left out before he, the next day happened, when that meeting was supposed to happen, they actually catch uh, the guy from um, a different messenger from Austria. And it appeared as though they were checking in on Fouché for being a double agent against them. So let me break down what actually happened. So basically, Fouché already knew that Napoleon had a bunch of spies. And what he did was first he did the mirroring to piss everybody off. Nobody could really put a pulse on him. But then he did the shadow technique as well because he um, he knew Napoleon had spies on him. So what he did was he put spies on Napoleon's spies. So he knew that he captured that other guy. So basically he set up an elaborate like escape plan of being caught because he already knew he had his spies doing his spies. And Napoleon was pissed, but he had no hard evidence. So there's nothing he could really say. The second one is the uh, narcissist effect 
So this is basically about that Greek story of Narciss um, Narcissus, where he falls in love with his image. He finds out that he can't actually hold on to his image, so he drowns himself in, in despair because he loved himself so much. Uh, Louis XIV, the, the, the eventual Sun King, um, he was uh, like... Um, he was obviously very sought after a commodity and they lived in a very courtier world. And I'm trying to look, find the guy's name. Uh, I mean, the, the lady's name is like Marie. I think it's Marie Mancini. Yeah, Marie Mancini. So she was um, a uh, she was in, in a family of royalty, but her sisters were very pretty and her mom was pretty and she was ugly. And they basically were trying to ship her off to a convent, but she didn't want to go. So she was like, you know, I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to study Latin, French, uh, all of the great novels, all this different stuff. And I'm going to kind of better myself in that way. The few kind of events that they let her go to, um, she became a great listener, a great studier. And she kind of realized that when her sisters would talk to Louis XIV, and she also decided she wanted to capture him. They would talk to her, and they would, the shit they would talk about, that, like, superficial stuff, he didn't really like it. He didn't like all the court politics. He didn't like this. He liked to read adventure novels. He liked the, the glory the glory of kings and different things like that. She studied all of this, and basically, when she'd have a chance to talk to him, she talked about completely different things, not gossip, not fashion. She talked about glory, um, of what he could be, um of uh the adventure and, and and accomplishing things she read what he read and she actually created the idea and the image of the sun king and um he wasn't really allowed to marry her because it didn't really forge a um alliance with another country and her uncle also really w was very high up and he wasn't gonna let that happen but he very much um admitted that the person he ever really only loved was Marie Mancini and that she really had a supreme effect on what he became and how she did this was using the narcissist effect so she um showed his image to him and he loved that and he he um he consumed that and he, that's what really drove him because rarely in life most people want to talk about themselves rarely does somebody take the effort and time in giving you the image that you want to see and it actually propelled him to become more than what he could be because she gave um an ideal for him to strive for that was very consistent with what he wanted the uh next one is the moral effect so uh we'll, we'll skip skip to ivan uh the terrible so this story also has come up um a few times and basically um when his mom and his dad die, he's left young, and the boyers basically they they ruin his life. And when he's thirteen, he ends up killing one of them because they're just mocking him. And one thing they used to do was like have him they put him on the throne as kind of like a helpless little play, and his feet couldn't even touch the ground, and they pass him around from each other, just kind of showing the helplessness of him. And uh, when during his reign, he still has trouble. Uh, with the boyers and a lot of the politics and the people, everybody complaining, whining. One time he abdicates, but another point he leaves. And what he does is he puts um, somebody that's of like, not, he's not of a Christian or he wasn't of a Christian faith originally. He was of like um, a basically an unappreciated uh, religion, like one that they kind of look as a infidels and inferior originally. And, and he leaves and he puts him on the throne. He knows nobody's going to listen to this guy, but he has this guy really represent a lot of his sentiments and makes him the czar. And uh, Ivan, he leaves and he'll come in and he'll basically uh, ask for favors from this guy. And slowly people realize, especially the boyers, they realize that he has put a king with no power or a czar up there with no power. And this is actually resembling what what they used to do to him when he was younger and they're understanding it that like oh this is what it is when you have somebody that's in power that's helpless that can't do anything and the the country's going to shit because nothing's getting done nothing's getting accomplished and russia was in turmoil already and um basically uh, long story short they end up begging him to come back and he became the czar for the rest of his rule and then they let him kind of give a lot more of his policies but really what he did was um, he gave them a taste of his own medicine. He felt like the teacher that's in the room. Everybody's had this, especially when it's like a substitute. But when the teacher's in the room that um, 
you know, everybody's talking and making jokes. And when they raise their voice, people just kind of laugh harder and just don't listen more. And basically what he did was he put up a substitute in there that couldn't do anything. And then people realize, you know, I'm coming here and I'm not learning shit and I can't pass the tests and I'm failing because we're not learning anything. We want the old teacher back. And then the old teacher came back. Um, I'm trying to make this quick because, I mean, this is a long chapter, but the video is getting long. And then the hallucinatory effect. And this one is actually when, uh, like, if you look into kind of mirrors, everything is like a flipped image. Or if you ever saw Ocean's Eleven, uh, they like kind of, they do this trick where they convince the guy that they're robbing the bank, but really it's a video. And then they really rob the bank later. Um, but uh, basically the, the wild kid, um, yellow kid, uh, Wiley or whatever, um, and I'll just kind of make it real quick. Basically, a bank leaves, and what he did was he would go into these places, and he did it with like real estate companies, um, gambling places. When they would leave and move, he would go in, hire a bunch of people, set up shop there, and then hire employees and make it look like real bank transactions were happening and real things were going on. And then, uh, um, he would get really wealthy people to deposit lots of money and then he would take it. But he would confuse them because people want to believe if you can set up an ambiance where it feels like it's real, people will believe it. And that's the hallucinatory effect um, to kind of make it seem as if things are happening when they're not. So that is the other one. There's a lot of other stories and even a couple in particular that I like more, but harder to explain in this format. Uh, if you really want the full... Um, uh, value you just got to pick up the book the reversal to this though is that you don't want to ever mirror like a negative uh like a negative person so um there is a story that they do give but one that could be very practical in everyday life is that for example like if you're dating some chick and she had an abusive boyfriend you, you would not want to start mirroring something that resembles that and then you start to get associated with that or anything like that you don't want to be associated if you're working at a job and there was like a piece of shit employee and there's certain things that they did you would not want to become a mirror of what represented that because then that would spell disaster for you um so that's it for this one like comment subscribe link in the description below where you can pick up the book until next time shiboy decodes peace